Today's talk is on exploiting differential flatness for robust learning-based tracking control using Gaussian processes. My name is Melissa Hria, and this work was done in collaboration with Professor Angela Schulich at the University of Toronto. Learning-based control has shown to outperform conventional model-based techniques in the presence of model uncertainties, systematic disturbances. However, most state-of-the-art learning-based non-linear trajectory tracking controllers still lack any formal guarantees. Today, I'll present our work where we exploit the property of differential flatness to design an online, robust learning-based controller to achieve both high tracking performance and probabilistically guarantee a uniform ultimate bound on the tracking error. Differential flatness is a structural property that allows us to separate the system dynamics into a linear dynamics and a non-linear term. A common control approach for differentially flat systems is to try to linearize the system by using a feedback linearization controller designed based on, on a nominal system model. The nominal feedback linearization tries to cancel the nonlinear term, and then an outer loop linear controller, such as an LQR controller, is designed based on the linear dynamics. However, performance and safety are limited by the mismatch between the nominal model and the actual system. In the case of no nonlinear mismatch, a unity mapping between the output of the linear controller and the input seen by the linear dynamics is achieved. In reality, because of this model mismatch, this is not the case. While our system dynamics are unknown, in this work, we still make two major assumptions. Firstly, we assume that both the actual system and our normal normal model are control affine. In this case, functions f and g in the system dynamics are unknown while f hat and g hat are known functions in our nominal model. Secondly, we assume that both the actual system and our nominal model are differentially flat. This means that we can rewrite system dynamics comprising of a nonlinear term, where the functions alpha and beta are now unknown, and a known linear dynamics. We can similarly do the same thing for our nominal model. While both our system and nominal model have the same linear dynamics, there is a nonlinear mismatch as a result of the functions alpha and beta being unknown. There are two main strategies to incorporate learning into the control loop for differentially flat systems. The first strategy, which we call feedback correction only, tries to learn an inverse to the nonlinear mismatch. While this strategy can improve the feedback linearization, it provides no guarantee of stability. The second strategy, which we call robust only, instead tries to quantify a bound on the nonlinear mismatch and then designs a robust linear controller based on the bound. While stability can be guaranteed, performance is limited as this approach does not improve the feedback linearization. Our proposed approach combines ideas from both strategies. Our proposed methodology has three key components. Similar to strategy one, we learn an inverse nonlinear mismatch by using a Gaussian process. This improves the feedback linearization. We then show how we can quantify the uncertainty in this improved feedback linearization. This bound on uncertainty is variable and adapts based on where we have more data and knowledge about our system. Therefore, allowing us to better achieve a balance between performance and robustness. We can then use this uncertainty in a robust linear control framework to guarantee an ultimate bound on the tracking error. We want to learn an inverse to the nonlinear mismatch. In other words, we want to learn a mapping from state Z and input V to the commanded input V command. We can write the inverse nonlinear mismatch in the following way. In this case, function VE is an unknown function because functions alpha and beta in the system dynamics are unknown. We propose learning this function 
using a Gaussian process. Once we have done this, during the running phase, we query the Gaussian process at the current state and the desired input from the outer loop linear controller and update the inverse nonlinear mismatch using the mean. The aim is to achieve unity mapping from the desired input, VD, to the input seen by the linear dynamics. We can write the input V in the following way. When the mean of the Gaussian process exactly represents the unknown function VE, the second term is zero, and this unity mapping is achieved. However, this may not always be the case. We therefore aim to find a bound on the second term. This bound will be variable depending on where we have more data and knowledge about our system. We aim to compute bound C that satisfies the following relationship where delta is some small value. To do this, we utilize two key properties of Gaussian processes. The first property is that the derivative of a Gaussian process with respect to one of its inputs is also a Gaussian process. We can write the ratio of the functions beta hat from our nominal model and beta unknown in our system in terms of the partial derivative of our unknown function PE with respect to one of its inputs. Utilizing this first property, this ratio is one over a Gaussian. The second property is the conditioning property of Gaussian processes, which quantifies the uncertainty in our predicted mean. Using results on the ratios of Gaussians, we can analytically compute bound C. We can then design a robust LQR controller by combining a nominal LQR found by solving the algebraic Riccati equation based on the linear dynamics with a robustness term. The robustness term is dependent on the variable bound C, matrix B from the linear model, and matrix P found from the algebraic Riccati equation. Combining this robust controller with the learned inverse, we can show that the tracking error is uniformly ultimately bounded. We perform our first simulation on 1D quadrota where there is a mismatch between system and nominal model. In the first test, we use an offline learned model where the Gaussian process uses 500 data points from a non-aggressive trajectory. We investigate the average tracking error for increasingly more aggressive trajectories. We compare this for the nominal case, i.e. no learning, strategy one, or feedback correction only, strategy two, or robust only, and our proposed strategy in red. It is very important to notice that for the most aggressive trajectories, i.e. omega greater than 1.2, feedback correction only can cause instability because it does not account for uncertainty in the learned model. In the second test, we update the Gaussian process using the last 100 data points collected during the current trajectory. We see that our proposed approach outperforms the robust only approach by 50 to 65 percent and feedback correction only 27 to 57 percent. We perform another simulation on an inverted pendulum. Similar to our previous simulation, our Gaussian process is updated online using the last 100 data points collected. Our proposed approach outperforms robust only by over 50% and feedback correction only by 50 to 70%. We've shown that the theoretical computed tracking error bound and the actual tracking error bound observed during one of our simulations. For both robust only and our proposed approach, this is indeed an upper bound on the error. However, our proposed approach has a lower computed tracking error bound compared to robust only because we also improve the feedback linearization. 
To summarize, by exploiting differential flatness and the ability of Gaussian processes to predict derivatives and quantify uncertainty, we develop a learning-based controller that achieves high accuracy tracking while guaranteeing a bound on the tracking error. Our approach significantly outperforms similar learning-based control strategies that try to exploit differential flatness. <laughs>